Hi, I'm Michelle Perez. I got a lot of questions. Hi, I'm Mike Pincus. I think I may have all the answers. Welcome to the Mike Pincus Fitness Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by rxfitnessequipment.com. My good buddy, Tim Adams, is the owner, creator, founder, extraordinaire. This man knows more about fitness equipment than anybody that I've ever come in contact with. Uh, He goes to the trade shows and everybody knows his name. It's kind of like going to Cheers. Everyone knows your name. It's kind of a neat analogy if you think about that. Uh, Go see Tim. Sit up at the bar. There's no bar there, but go sit at the counter. Check out the equipment. Talk to him. Find out what your needs are for your home, a small gym, even a big commercial gym. He'll take care of you. Uh, This is the best equipment anywhere around. I mean, he's got the best lines of equipment um, from treadmills to ellipticals, Stairmasters, free weights, machines, anything and everything you can think of when it comes to human movement and challenging the body, getting us in better shape. RX Fitness Equipment has it all. Go check them out, rxfitnessequipment.com. Tell them Mike sent you. All right. How was the workout? It was good. What'd you do? Um, so I basically, so I'm training for a half marathon. Okay. I don't know if we've told you that no. before. Nice. Um, when is it? It's in May. Okay. <laughs> um, and I've known March, for... March, April. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So I've known for a year and I started training in... January, December. Oh, yeah, that's December. good. But like you know, life happens. Family right. came to visit. I get sick. Right. My knee hurts. I don't yeah. Know, random stuff. Um, Listen to David Goggins. Work uh, right through that pain. Oh. <laughs> Nothing can hurt you. Uh, I need to write that down. Um, but yeah, so basically, I found myself starting from square one again. And I'm just telling myself that if I need to walk it, then I will. Right. So I'm going to walk until I feel good enough to start running again. Have you done a half marathon before? Nope. First time. What's the longest you've ran? Uh, Five miles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, five miles, but that was also like a while ago. It's doable. What are you at now? What's the longest you've ran? Um, run, walk three. Okay. Um, because I'm having like some shin issues and so I got new shoes and, um, tried to get back into running. Have you done anything for recovery for your shin splints? What's recovery, Mike? I don't know. I haven't actually. Foam roll, use the massage stick, thumper. Um, stretching. Perfect. This is a great segue, (laughs) and we can keep rolling on this. So there is plenty of research of, all right, so there's a a ton of research of stretching and Mm -hmm. non-stretching. Gymnast, my wife is a gymnast, former competitive gymnast. She will tell you that absolutely you need to stretch, Um, gymnast stretch. I mean, there's no question about it. Um, We're the only species on the planet that stretches that does static stretching or dynamic stretching of any kind. Is that because we sit more than no, any other No, it's probably species? because we were taught to stretch. Oh. But dogs don't stretch. Cats don't stretch. They get up and they do it. They curl their back yeah. and then they go. Yeah. They, I mean, they get I mean, you scare a cat. <laughs> you guys have cats. Yeah. Dead sleep cat. Mm-hmm. Scare the cat. What happens? Cat takes off. Yeah. They don't tear a muscle. They don't hurt themselves. <laughs> They just go like, well, hang on. I'm not going to run until I stretch out my hammies. Right. So there's two sides to that. And I have enough research to support both sides to stretch and not stretch. However, uh, I teach in analogies, as you know. Mm-hmm. So take a garden hose, tie okay. a knot in it. Okay. Tie a tight knot in it. Mm-hmm. Turn the water on. Very little bit of water will trickle through that knot mm. until you break the knot up. You got to massage it out. So in terms of our bodies, we have right underneath our skin, we have something that's called fascia. Mm -hmm. And fascia has been there forever. It's now become the, in the fitness side of things, you know, in the nutrition side, we have 
all of our trendy words and our little taglines of different diets and, you know, are you, are you keto and things yeah. like that? Well, on the fitness side, we have little things um, that are coming up that we've known about forever, but we're understanding the body more. And it's called fascia. And if you've seen those foam rollers at the gym. Um, yes, we okay. actually have one because Jonathan, my one? husband, likes to roll out. Okay. And he's always like, go foam roll. And then I'm like, what do I do with it? Hit you over the head with it? it hurts. Oh, it (laughs) hurts. So absolutely need a foam roll. Yeah. All right. So the whole idea behind foam roll, have you ever had a massage? Yes. Okay. And it feels really good. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's called self myofascial release Mm -hmm. is using a foam roller. So a foam roller is $30. And they sell them at rxfitnessequipment.com. Um, That's great. <laughs> yeah. And they they come in all different densities um, and so forth. But the whole idea behind the foam roller is to break up the fascia. Okay. So underneath our, um, you guys can't see this because it's radio, duh. But <laughs> underneath our skin, right underneath the skin, we have this fascia. And if you, there's some really cool videos on uh, YouTube. Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to move uh, the fascia is supposed to move very fluid like and not glue like. And so what happens is as we overuse our muscles, um, the fascia starts to lock down and starts to get glue like, and it doesn't move nice and smooth, uh, with the joints and Mm -hmm. and the motion of the body. So what you want to do is you want to break up that fascia. You can stretch and stretch all you want, but if the fascia is not moving properly, the stretching is not going to do anything for you. So we've found, I have found personally with my clients, better results just from, from, uh, excuse me, just from foam rolling. Say that five times fast. Yeah. Just from (laughs) foam rolling, uh, more than I have from stretching by far. Now there's different types. Now the thing is that people get into foam rolling and they think harder is better. Mm -hmm. Um, they think I'm just going to go crazy on this. Well, think about it with a massage. You've had deep tissue massage where they go to like, they're working on your back and you think they're coming through your spine to your stomach. That's not, you can't move for like five days. Yeah. That's not beneficial. That's not what you want. Mm -hmm. And then there's the complete opposite where you go and you think that they're just applying lotion to you. Mm -hmm. So you want somewhere in the middle and that's kind of what when you're doing the foam rolling uh, for yourself Mm -hmm. or using, um, they have what's called a massage stick and it's, um, I don't know, it's 12, 18 inches in in length and it's got two handles on it. They're actually, it's really kind of cool. The guy that invented it, uh, his daughter was an Olympic uh, runner. Um, I don't know if she was a sprinter or long distance, but he took a stick and he took bicycle handles Mm -hmm. uh, from handlebars put them on the end of this PVC pipe. And so it's got a little bit bend to it. And then he added, uh, it, before he put the handles on, he put on bigger PVC rings all the way on it. So they move up and down uh, or they roll oh, like okay. a, almost like a rolling pin. Mm-hmm. And the idea was that he figured out he had no formal training in this. And he figured out that if we can, uh, loosen up the muscles, he didn't know what he was doing, but it was loosening up the fascia Yeah, that his daughter was able to perform better, uh, in her event, in her sport. And now suddenly, this is before this is well, be, sport. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He would, she would, he would work on her hamstrings, calves, uh, quads, shin, you know, tibialis. Yeah. Um, he would work on all of that before her event and then afterwards as well. Mm-hmm. And in, I'm sure she did some stretching. Um, I, I shouldn't say I'm sure. I would imagine she did some stretching. Yeah. But it was predominantly using this massage uh, stick. And her numbers were off the charts. It was amazing. Wow. And everybody started asking, hey, can you make me one? Oh, sure. Can you make me one? Well, then it became known as, and it's literally called the massage stick. Mm-hmm. Um, Tim sells them. Yeah. For a runner, extremely important. Um, you would actually, um, before you go out, um, spend five, two to five minutes mm-hmm. massage total, massaging your shins, um, both sides, uh, both legs, and then massage your calves, uh, up and down, just kind of getting fluid going and then hamstrings and your thighs, your quadriceps. And then when you get done, um, with the run, you would finish up with that as well. And if Same. you want to do some stretching, go for it. Yeah. But as cyclists, and Jonathan knows of cycling, um, it's extremely important and yeah. it's super beneficial. Yeah. And there's He's so many, yeah, there's so many different recovery tools 
out there now. Yeah. Um, but that's a very basic one that everyone should have yeah. in their arsenal. All my clients have foam rollers and I'm well, a big believer in it. That's good to know because I thought that my issue with my shins, well, we thought it was first the shoes, which the shoes did help a bunch. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I thought that I wasn't warming up enough before my run. And so, you know, someone taught me to do like these, um, I forget what the term is, but it's like some lunges that you mm-hmm. can do that's like stretching, but it's a warm up. Right. And so that kind of helps, but I think that maybe because I'm sitting all day. Oh, absolutely. Um, when are you doing your run? In the morning after, or after work? After work. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So here you've been sitting all day, everything's mm-hmm. locked up, and there is not a proper warm up. Absolutely. Right. You can cause problems with that. So I would. Um, you know, if your goal is you're going to run 13, was 13.2? 13.1. 13.1 miles. So yeah. on days that, you know, you're going to be start building up to this, mm-hmm. um, I would definitely get a massage stick, use the foam roller, whichever one you like, uh, work on the shins, work on the calves, hamstrings, glutes, quads, and everything lower body. Mm-hmm. Uh, even work on, you know, do your upper back, uh, your low back and upper back. And I would do that for five minutes before, uh, right before you're about to go out. Your shoes are on because you run at home or the, at the gym? At the gym, on the oh, treadmill. On the treadmill, mm-hmm. okay. Well, now, now I'll probably switch it up since it'll be getting darker later, okay. which is nice. So um, I would do, spend five, seven minutes foam rolling, um, predominantly your lower body. Mm-hmm. Then when you start your actual run, you want to start walking first. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe, you know, five minutes and then get up to a nice jog, take your pace up a little bit, bring it back down to a jog and then go back up to a run and then just progressively get into that further and further and further. Now there's a difference of running on a treadmill or running on the street. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel a difference? Yeah. All right. What do you feel? Um, definitely feels like running outside is more effort Mm -hmm. because with the treadmill you have that like you know, it's constantly going. So it kind right. of, it gives, it helps you a little bit to get that bounce in yep. your step. Yep. Um, and, and obviously like when you run outside, you have the ability to, um, to train on like different levels of ground. It right. might not be like super inclines or anything like that. Right. Um, whereas in the treadmill, you only have the settings that the treadmill gives you like right. the half, the yep. one, and then goes up from there. Yep. Um, so yeah, I I definitely do like running more outside because it feels like I'm actually challenging my body. Right. Um, not saying that the treadmill is easy because it's not. Yeah. And it also tends to be a little bit boring. So one of the things you'll notice with the, uh, well, you may not even notice this, but one of the big difference of treadmill and outside running. So when you're outside running, you your body, you have to propel yourself forward. On right. a treadmill, which is, you, you said this already, but a, a treadmill, it will propel you. And mm-hmm. So the belt is continuing to go. You just have to keep up with the belt. Mm-hmm. Well, what's happening there is you're missing um, what's called triple extension. Okay. So when you're a runner, you're getting full extension of your hip. You're getting full extension of your knee. And you're getting full extension of your ankle. So if you can kind of picture a uh, side view of a person running and they're getting that uh, full motion going forward in the, let's say the left leg's going forward and right leg is still on the ground. Um, mm-hmm. and you're going to be pushing off that your hip is fully extended. Your knee is fully extended and your ankle, you're actually pushing off the big toe and your ankle is fully extended. So that is propelling you forward. Well, on a treadmill, you do not have to get that full, that triple extension on the ankle. Okay. Um, you do not have to toe off mm-hmm. On a treadmill, off the, when I say toe off, meaning off the big toe, right? You do not, you do not have to do that. The treadmill will do it for you. Not that it's bad, not that it's good. It's just different. Yeah. Some will tell you that it's not proper, and but look, there are people out there that are training. You know, they live in Chicago and mm-hmm. they train on a treadmill, and then they go run the Chicago Marathon, and they're fine. So, it's just something to be aware of. Yeah. Um, so, now those people know that that's gonna they. Whether they know the exact reasoning, they just know that it's going to feel different. Yeah. So that, but that can also cause an issue for you. 
um, in terms of how your body is responding. You may, the treadmill that you're on at the gym may have a, what's called a floating deck. So the surface you're actually running on Mm -hmm. actually has spring to it. And that's great. Uh, It takes away the shock and the absorb, you know, absorbs all the pressure and all that. However, when you go to run the marathon or half marathon on the street, there is nothing taken away. Mm -hmm. So either you're, you have to have really good shoes. You also have to have really good running form Mm -hmm. and, um, understand that that can cause discomfort. Okay. Right. Again, not bad, not good, but it definitely will make it, will make a change. So yeah. What shoes did you, what shoes were you running in? I was running remember? in Brooks. Okay. Um, I don't remember the exact brand. Um, and they were working um, pretty well. And then um, Jonathan has an uncle who's a physical therapist. Oh, good. And he also um, is super fit. And he does like Iron Man or used to do Iron, used to do Iron Man's and, um, uh, he runs a lot. Perfect. Um, and so he recommend like he looked at my feet and how I stand. Oh, nice. And he recommended a, a shoe, which is what I'm currently wearing, and they're so comfortable. Awesome. Like, I put them on, and my feet felt like they were getting hugs. Awesome. What do you remember? The, what kind of shoe it is? Um, Curious. Let me see. You have mine. Yeah. Nice. We're looking at her shoes. She's looking at her shoes. Hold, please. They're Saucony, but I don't know the exact. Can you see the side of my shoe there? <laughs> That's okay. I won't even. I won't even know. Yeah, oh, the yeah. Saucony Kinvara. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, I know. Actually, um, I do so know the shoe. When I stand, um, my feet kind of go in. Pronate. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so I think these have more like an arch support, so right. that when I run, my feet aren't going in. They're just like perfect, normal. Normal Perfect. running feet. But I will say that Jonathan has seen me run and says I have pretty good form. So at least I have that going for me. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Now, so, one of the other things. All right. So it's great that your Jonathan's uncle is physical therapist. And, you know, that's a perfect example for people listening that if you are going to do, you know, uh, running is a sport. Running right. is not fitness. Um, people that always cracks me up. People say, well, I'm going to get in shape. So I'm going to go running. No, yeah. you need to be in shape to run. Yeah. Anybody can walk. Not mm-hmm. everyone can run. Uh, riding a bicycle can be considered fitness. Riding a bicycle can also be a sport depending mm-hmm. on the, what, uh, the speed you're doing, the technical you're doing, uh, that you're doing, that you're riding, um, you're riding, you know, street, you're doing mountain biking and, and all everything in between. But what's extremely important is that, when you decide to go into a sport is that you, like you did, you met with his uncle's right. physical therapist is that you have somebody analyze, uh, like if you're a cyclist, you want to be having a professional bike fit. If mm-hmm. you're a runner, you really want to have somebody that's professional looking at your feet, looking at your gait, uh, which is the, the positioning that you're actually running in right. and making sure that everything is being controlled. Now, you have, so he tested you and he knows that he was able to see that your feet cave in. That's mm-hmm. called pronation. Now you can, you have a couple options. One option is to put a shoe on that has more arch support that, that doesn't allow pronation. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. However, if we don't allow pronation of the ankle, uh, that foot rolling in, the foot's going to want to do it anyways. So if there is something there, like a arch support stopping it, it's still going to happen in the body. And if the ankle can't do it, it's going to go up to the next joint, which is the knee joint. Mm. So one of the things you really want to watch is now that you're doing this that, and you're running with better form, better shoes that stop the pronation or control the pronation mm-hmm. is let's make sure your knees don't start bothering you. And that's really common where people start, oh, I stopped my pronation and all of a sudden I have a knee pain or worse, it goes up to my hip pain Mm -hmm. and then they get a low back pain and they don't understand. They're like, wait, I'm in good shoes. Why do I have low back pain? Yeah. You stop pronation. Yeah. Now, so it's not to say you want to switch out, you know, don't, don't switch out shoes. However, one of the best ways to strengthen your running is if you look at when you're running is you are 80% you're on one foot. 
Okay. So mm -hmm. when you're taking a stride, you, you, you're, you're in your running stance, your left foot's moving forward, right foot's on the ground. Right. You know? So you're only on one foot. Mm -hmm. If you can't control your body weight on one leg, then running is not even an option. So and people look at them, well, I'm just running. What's the big deal? Well, it's like any sport out there. There's a, a proper way to do it. So what I would have you do, along with everything else, the foam rolling and all that, is while you're brushing your teeth at night and you're barefoot in your bathroom, uh, do you have carpet or a rug in front of, can you remember, or is it hard surface? In the bathroom? In the bathroom. It's a hard surface. Okay, perfect. So you're going to start, and this is for anybody listening to mm -hmm. this, you're going to start on a hard surface barefoot while brushing your teeth and stand on one leg barefoot. Okay. So stand on your right foot for, we are supposed to brush our teeth for two minutes. Uh -huh. If you use an electric toothbrush, it's 30 seconds per quadrant. So stand on your right foot for 30 seconds, switch over to your left foot for 30, back to your right, back to your left, 30 seconds each foot. Pay it in your, when you're standing on your right foot, your left foot cannot touch anything. Try not okay. to touch the counter with your hands, but know that the counter is there if you need it. Mm -hmm. You'll find one leg is stronger, one foot, ankle is stronger than the other. What's supposed to happen is you are not supposed to get a burning sensation in the bottom of your foot. Okay, when you stand on mm -hmm. one leg, also, put a, the slight, don't lock out your knee. Put a slightest bend in the knee. Okay. It's, it's a straight, what I call a straight leg. It's not locked, but it's not really bent. Mm -hmm. It's a, I call it a soft knee, if you will. When you're standing on one leg or one foot, your glute on that side is what's supposed to give out first. So if I'm standing on my right foot, my right glute should give out first. Mm -hmm. Then in chain of command, it would be my right thigh, my quadricep. Then my right, my all right side. Then my hamstring, back of the leg. Then my uh, calf. And then my shin. The last thing would be is the bottom of your foot. Okay. And most of my clients, when I have them stand on one foot, the bottom of the foot starts burning. Because all the muscles are just freaking out. Mm. They're, so if we keep our feet in shoes long enough, they just, they go to sleep. Now, our feet go to sleep, the muscles. We just don't use them. Wow. It's like walking around with crutches. Mm -hmm. You know, if you continue to walk around with crutches all the time, your legs or muscles are actually going to atrophy. Right. I mean, you see it in people in wheelchair, you know, if, or if you break your leg and you're in a cast and you've, you're in a wheelchair for six weeks, take the cast off and look what happens. Mm -hmm. So that's the same thing happens with us in shoes. This is kind of get you off topic, but we were not born with shoes. We were not designed to wear shoes. Yeah. So there's a lot of runners out there that run barefoot. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not promoting everyone to go run barefoot, okay? Because I've done it, and if you don't train for it, it's very painful. Yeah. But the object is that you need, everyone needs to, that um, everyone that is running should be able to eventually get to a point where they can run barefoot. Not that they want to, not that they have to. But you need your feet so strong that if you decide to kick off your shoes and go running, you could do it. Huh. And it starts by, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, I'm just going to go barefoot and go running. Yeah, good luck. Let's see how that works for you. Yeah. You're going to cause a lot more problems. Can't even do it with shoes. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so you literally start by just standing on one foot, brushing yeah. your teeth. And once that's easy... Um, you're up to 60, 90 seconds on one foot nonstop. And it's no problem. You're, you're solid. You're not wobbling all over the place. Uh, you're feeling the glutes give out. The bottom of the foot's not even giving out. All that's great. Now, just put a, a rug, um, small area rug uh, underneath your foot. Mm -hmm. So that's going to add a level of imbalance. Uh, that you're going to have to work on. Then once that gets easy, you then can add a blue Airx pad. Uh, it's like a blue foam pad. Mm -hmm. And then you can go to a disc, a Dyna disc, which has got air in it. I mean, it's just endless. Right. And this is literally just standing on one foot. And it's the, the payout is huge. Mm -hmm. So if you take that simple exercise along with foam rolling, huge advantage and make a huge difference in terms of shin splints, I yeah. think. That's awesome. Yeah, so try those. I'm excited for that because, like, you know, ask my husband, like, shin, the shin oh, issue has been, crazy. like, one of those super discouraging things yep. because it's not that I I don't have the drive or, like, 
the motivation or, right. the, or the energy to do it. It's just that like when I start running, um, my legs start hurting. And then you always think of um, that saying that they tell you if it hurts, then that's not a good sign. Right. So you don't want to push through it and then get injured and then exactly. not be able to do anything. Yeah. And that's the so. thing is, you, you, you know, at the end of your half marathon, you're looking at a medal. Mm-hmm. You know, you may get a ribbon. Yeah. You know, you, I doubt you're even going to get a trophy. Yeah. Um, there is no money in this for you. Matter right. of fact, you're paying your entry fee to get in. Yeah. So why push it uh, for no reason? You know, if you're a professional athlete, yeah, mm-hmm. it's a whole different story. Yeah. Uh, but I would definitely work on those. Yeah. Yeah. Give that That's a shot. Great. Thank you. Cool. I appreciate yep. it. Um, so on that note, um, since we talked about running mm-hmm. and um, not exactly, I'm not exactly a newbie runner but I wouldn't call myself like a professional either um let's talk a little bit about getting into exercising so someone who hasn't exercised Mm -hmm. in their life at all and one day they wake up and they're like oh well I want to bench press 200 pounds or whatever or I want to do like crossfit and lift a tire across um, the parking lot right? or um, someone who wants to run one day who's never run in their entire life, right? probably has never even walked yep. and they're like, oh, I want to do a marathon. Um, talk a little bit about some realistic tips for someone who is wanting to exercise. In other words, how can they start smart? Perfect. Okay. So the... Uh, the first place you have to look at, and everyone needs to be aware of this, is it, it's really a numbers game. Mm-hmm. Meaning, if you are not exercising right now, we call that, in my world, we call that as, at zero. Okay, you're literally ground zero. And the next number is one. So what that means is I want you to, um, one day a week, think about doing something physical and start with that. A lot of people do is they think, okay, I need to exercise and maybe forget social media for a second. They uh, watch the television and they see some TV shows um, and they say, okay, well, I need to exercise. So I'm going to do what I see on television and man, they're going crazy for it. Um, They're working out five days a week. They're doing super hard training and these people are beginners. Uh, Mm -hmm. so that's what I need to do clearly. And that's, you have to understand that's for television. Yeah. Okay. So there was the, the show that made it famous is the biggest loser. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to talk about that one at all. And they took, uh, people that were completely out of shape, very overweight, and they got them exercising and they exercise them hard and everyone watched it, you know, six to eight hours a day. Yeah. They cut their calories way back. And I can tell you the exact numbers because, uh, I met the gentleman that did the actual training behind mm-hmm. the scenes and, and he was doing what he was told to do. Uh, he did not agree with the whole concept, Yeah, but he had to do it because he was getting paid and it was a TV show. Right. So, it, um, it's brutal. I mean, it, it's crazy, but the problem is that this is what, what I call middle America. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's anybody in the world is watching this saying, this is what I have to do in order to get in shape. Yeah. And that's just not true. So you're at zero. The first number is one. Mm-hmm. Can you one day a week, can you get up off the couch and go for a walk? And the answer I hope is yes. Okay, well, but wouldn't three days be better? Well, yeah, three days would be better, but I want you to adhere to something that you're going to be able to stick with forever. Yeah. Okay, this is not a a 30-day challenge, a 90-day challenge. This is you're changing your life. Yeah. Okay, but you're doing it slowly. Uh, It's like anything else. If we said, um, you know, if uh, if my financial advisor came in and said, okay, what you guys are doing is all wrong. We need to stop everything. You're no no longer you guys going out to dinner. No longer you going on vacations. No, you're not spending any money. You are just going to sit home and do nothing. Yeah, well, we probably get to our goal, but at 
what expense. Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing with, uh, with people that exercise. Yes, you could get up off of the couch and exercise every day and you may or may not get injured mm-hmm. and you may, you would definitely get your goal, but at what cost? Yeah. So I like people to start with realistic numbers. Mm-hmm. Okay, so somebody says, all right, well, I can definitely do one day a week and I can go for a walk and I can leave my house for 10 minutes, turn around and come back and there's 20 minutes of exercise. Great, that's perfect. But Mike, being realistic, I probably can do two days a week. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So is this something that you can maintain for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. Not, hey, I'm uh, off work for the next five weeks and I can work out a lot. Yeah. Uh, so, and this is what I get a lot of times is people say that, um, I'm not five weeks necessarily, but I'm off for two weeks. So mm-hmm. let's take the end of the year. Perfect example. Uh, a lot of companies around here close for Christmas, New Year's yeah. and they say, okay, I'm going to, um, take two weeks off of work and I'm going to exercise every day, 14 days. Great. And then when work over starts the holidays. over the holidays, <laughs> and that's fine if they think that, and we both know that they're not going to work during the holiday itself, yeah. but let's say they do. And then work starts back up January 2nd. What happens to their workout schedule? It plummets. Yeah. And it goes back down to two days a week, Saturday and Sunday. Then eventually it's only one day because they need to, you know, they work Monday through Friday, mm-hmm. Saturday, they go for a walk or a run or even a hike. Sunday, they have things to do around the house, um, get ready for the next week or whatever. So it's just not realistic to start by doing that. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I don't, I definitely don't agree with people, uh, that try these things. And I have yet to see somebody go from zero to a hundred and have it work. So start with, let's call it two days a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to call it two days a week of 20 minutes of cardiovascular exercise. Uh, we're going to call it walking. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, but this can be cycling. Um, you can go for a bike ride. You can play tennis. You can swim. You can hike. You can um, climb stairs. You can do whatever you want for mm-hmm. 20 minutes. Leave the house 10 minutes, come back 10 minutes. So we do that for two days, 20 minutes. Now that takes care of our cardiovascular system. Okay. And now let's work on our strength training. Well, what's the difference? Mm-hmm. So the cardiovascular system is directly, our goal is to directly affect our oxygen intake and our breathing and our heart. Okay. So that's what we call cardiovascular cardiorespiratory system to make it simple for everyone to understand. Well, then we also know that we need to do strength training. Well, do we need to do strength training? The answer is absolutely 100%. No question about it. Everybody listening to this podcast needs to be doing strength training. Matter of fact, if you were to ask me, okay, if I can only do one and I want to lose weight mm-hmm. and I want to get my heart healthy and I want to increase my energy and I want to be in a smaller dress size or a smaller suit size and I want to move better and I want... um I just want my body to be as healthy as possible. Cardio or strength training? 100% strength training. Why is that? So this one's, this is one, I I love this um, topic um, probably more than anything. So the heart is a muscle. Yeah. Okay. And it's one of the strongest muscles in our body. Mm -hmm. Well, if we, I'm going to look at, I'm going to show it to you this way is, Cardio is strength training and strength training is cardio. Okay. So if I, if you're on a treadmill and you go for a run, all right, and mm-hmm. you're at a 0% incline, mm-hmm. so it's flat yeah, and you're running at, let's just call it 4.5 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. And we're going to keep it at 4.5. And I start bringing the front of that treadmill up and that treadmill goes higher and higher. And we're instead of at zero, we're now at a 10% incline. Do you think you're going to be able to maintain that 4.5 miles an hour running? No. Definitely not. No. Okay. So what's happened there is the resistance got higher. Okay. So it got harder. Let's let's not even use the word resistance. It got harder to run at that high level of an incline at that speed. Right. So you'd have to slow your speed down. Well, if I, uh, let's say somebody is used to running at a 10% incline. 
and they're used to running at three miles an hour. And if I lower that incline all the way down to zero, that three miles an hour can go faster. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that decreasing the resistance or making it easier and you can run faster. Okay. So we got, that's cardio. Mm-hmm. Take you over to the strength training, over into the weights. And we're doing a bicep curl. Okay. So you've got dumbbells in your hand, you're doing biceps. Well, what if the, the weight is three pounds and you did for 20 minutes? Resistance is light. It's easy. Yeah. And you can do it for a long duration. That's 20 minutes. Suddenly, dumbbell curls became cardio. But if I take that same exercise, instead of three-pound dumbbells, and I put in 20-pound dumbbells, you're not going to do... You may get three reps. Yeah. You may, you're definitely not getting 20 minutes. Right. So now it became strength training. So that's where we say is that it's all based on the resistance. Mm. So the heavier the resistance, it leans towards strength training. The lighter the resistance, it leans towards cardio. So you can do light dumbbells for a long duration. I wouldn't consider that strength training. That's going to be more towards cardio. So um, that's how they kind of intersect with each other, um, if that makes sense. So if the end goal of working out and exercising is to have muscle, Okay. I mean, that, that's really what everyone is after. They don't, maybe they don't know it. Yeah. But not everyone who wants to do exercise says, I want a strong heart. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and not everyone that exercises says, I want muscles on my body. They think, you know, I get a lot of times, I just, I want to be thin. Yeah. I want to be thinner than I am now. And I say, okay, do you want to change the way you look? Do you want to change the shape of your body? Or do you want to take the exact same body and just make it a smaller version of your former self? Most people say, well, I'd actually like to change the shape. Okay, so we want the shoulders a little wider. We want the waist a little smaller. So we were literally changing the shape. Well, you can't, you can't spot reduce. Mm-hmm. You can't body contour. Um, you can't tone up a muscle. You, all these terms that everyone throws out there, you just, you just can't do it. It's not possible. And we can go into those. But what you can do is change the way you look. By increasing muscle. So if you increase more muscle in your body, you will have less body fat. It just happens. So I shouldn't say it just happens. Where body fat is burned is in muscle. So in order for you to uh, have a leaner uh, a leaner physique, you have to increase your muscle. So when someone tells me they want to start exercising, I ask, what's your goal? Okay, well, I want to be, I want to be healthy. What does that mean? Uh, I, I want to be healthier than I am now to do what? Like, I need to know what your goal is. Um, I want to be stronger to do what? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I want to lift my grandkids. Okay, now we're on to something. So now you're telling me, you're, you're giving me a visual of what strength is. I want to be able to go to the pet store and pick up a 40-pound bag of dog food and not have to worry about how I'm getting into the house. Now we're talking strength. <clears throat> I had a client that I... I thought I was pretty clear on the goal when they said, I want to get stronger. And so I had them, this was years ago, I had all of their strength moves. I mean, the chart showed. I mean, they were getting stronger and stronger and stronger. It was amazing. And this is when I was doing, uh, when I was training clients using machines. Mm -hmm. And we were also... um, breaking body parts up into the way we train. So in other words, we would train like a leg press and then we would train legs. And then one day we would train, um, chest and shoulders. And then another day we would train back bodybuilding style. Yeah. Very different than the way I train today. And possibly because of this one gentleman and he had said, I want to be stronger. So I took that. I'm like, great, I'm going to get you stronger. Your bench press went up, your deadlift, your squat, your leg press, your, you're pulling more on the rowing and all these things. And he went to play with his grandkids and he went to pick up his grandkid and he could not pick his grandchild up. And he was mad at me and he said, I don't understand. I said, I want to get stronger. I said, you are stronger. All look at all the numbers. He's like, but I can't pick up my grandkid. And then it hit me. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. So his body is not working in conjunction together. It's not a, you know, uh, TRX, uh, suspension yeah. training. They, they did the best tagline, make your body your machine. It's phenomenal. I mean, yeah. that saying right there is everything. Yeah. Make your body your machine. 
love that. Love them for saying that. Yeah. So when now someone says to me, I want to get stronger, I will ask them, what's your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? I want to get healthier to do what? Yeah. And I'll take them down this path. And, and almost every time I can get them to understand what you're telling me is you want less body fat. You want more muscle. You don't want to be freaky looking by any means, mm-hmm. but you want to change the way you, you physically look. You want to change your shape. You want to move better. So you want better mobility. Uh, if you have, uh, if you're a mom or a dad and you want to pick up your kids or your grandparents, or you have no kids, but you have pets and you want to pick up dog food. So you need to be functional. And yeah. that's another term that's thrown around is functional training. And I, I love when trainers tell me, you know, I, I'm a functional trainer. That's what I do. I'm like, well, what does that mean? And most of them have no idea, <laughs> uh, but you know, the term gets thrown around and unfortunately clients are now asking, Oh, do you do functional training? And you have to say, yes, I do. But then I say, well, what does that mean to you? I'm like, yeah. well, I don't know, but it sounds like everyone's doing that and that's what I want to do. So again, you, you play the game and you say, okay, but let's really define what you want. And when that all, all of that is played out, I then say, okay, but where are you starting? Where do you stand right now? Now, sometimes people feel that they're in worse shape than they actually are. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, I can see that. Yeah, they, they really, I think they're, they underestimate themselves. Um, and we, you know, there's tests we can do and things like that. But, you know, I'll ask them, can you uh, go for a half hour walk? And like, oh, I don't know. Because again, in their mind, they're thinking I have a half hour run. And I got to get them understanding, no, this is not about a running. Yeah. This is can you walk for a half hour? Yeah. And they're like, okay. And I say, now, this is not walking in the mall and window shopping and stopping and looking. That, that's very different. But I want your tennis shoes on, headphones in, um, this podcast or some other podcast <laughs> or a book on tape and go for a walk. Can you do that with a good speed? So that when you come back, you're... Uh, one of the workouts, one of the things I like to say within the workout is you don't want to come back completely wiped out, exhausted, where you can't even move, but you also don't want to come back not needing a shower. Yeah. So it's somewhere in between there. And they say, okay, yeah, I can do all that. Perfect. So let's do that two days a week, 20 minutes. We're going to start with great. I can do that for the rest of my life. Now you may have to do more eventually. But we're going to start with two days, 20 minutes. Now let's start with strength training. Can you also do two days of strength training? And can we spend about 20 minutes doing that? Yeah, I can do that. So you're willing to give me two days for 40 minutes, or you're willing to give me four days, 20 minutes. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, great. So how is that going to look? Well, when I get home from work, I'm going to do, you know, little things, chores around the house, whatever. But yeah, I could do 20 minutes before dinner. I could walk for 10 and come back for 10. I could do that. Perfect. So we're going to do that, let's say, on Monday, Wednesday. On Tuesday, Thursday, you're going to do strength training. And we'll, you know, I'll design a workout for them um, for strength training. And they can do that for 20 minutes. That's all they have to start with. Mm -hmm. What I find amazing is how many of my clients have started with the very basics. And we've increased just slightly over the years. So... I've given, you know, they went from zero exercise to slightly more than Mm -hmm. what they were doing. You know, they were more than because they weren't doing anything, Um, but not killing them with their exercise. And they get to their goal. So you don't always have to, and you never should you start with the most amount. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important for um, everyone to remember as they tackle their exercising goals. Um, Another thing that I wanted to touch on, which is kind of in that same uh, realm, is people who have lofty exercise goals. Okay. Um, So let's say, um, I'm trying to think of something else besides running. (laughs) Okay. um, So they have a lofty exercise goal for what purpose? Um, What's their goal? Maybe it can just be like a bucket list item or... Um, I don't know. Why do people do crazy goals like, like, uh, doing an Ironman? Okay. So you've never 
let's not say never you've done some exercise okay. and then um you want to do an iron man or even like you've done some exercise and you want to get to the point where you can um bench press what's a what's a large amount of weight well, that depending people? on your size and so it's all relative but let's say that you've heard that uh, bench pressing 300 pounds is a lot. Yes. Okay. And you're like, I want to bench press 300 pounds in three months. Okay. Is that doable? Well, I'm going to use the word depends, okay. which everyone always hates, but mm-hmm. it depends where you're starting from. Mm-hmm. It depends if that, if literally, if, if it's a number of 300, if you're f- uh, male or female, okay. it's going to make a difference. Sorry, but it is. Mm-hmm. Um. It's going to depend on, do you have a strength coach that you're working with? Okay. uh, Who's going to map everything out for you. So it depends. Okay. Let's say you're a male, you're a high school kid, and you're working out with your friends, and you're currently benching 125 pounds. Mm -hmm. And your goal is to get up to 300 pounds. You're going to do it in three months? No. I'd I'd be shocked. Um, But is it possible to get 300 pounds? Absolutely. At some point. Now, if you're working with a certified strength coach, uh, which I'm not a certified strength coach, that's not my field of expertise, but I've studied enough of it to know that it's not my field of expertise. (laughs) Um, But they will, they're going to map it out and they're going to show you how many weeks it's going to get there and it's pound for pound. So you will be able to see week one, week two, what I'm doing, week 14, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. You're like, whoa, this is taking me a lot longer than I thought. Well, I'll tell you what. If they're really good at what they do and they're a certified strength coach, yeah. you're going to get to that 300 pounds and they're not going to injure you along the way. Okay. This is where, and this crosses over into a wonderful world of fitness right now is CrossFit. Mm-hmm. I'm not a CrossFit basher. I'm not a CrossFit hater. I don't hate on anything that's exercise. The problem I have is when you take couch potato people Mm -hmm. and that is anybody that is not used to exercising and they say, I want to get into great shape and I'm going to go join CrossFit. Um, And let me back it up here a little bit. When CrossFit first came out, when I personally heard about uh, CrossFit and what it was, uh, there were approximately... It was very early on. There were approximately 100 to maybe 200 what they call box gyms um, around. Uh, And when I say around, they'd probably be in the country. And you didn't hear much about them. And then it started growing more and more. And they got up to about 500 gyms. And then we started hearing what exactly what CrossFit was. And I think my understanding is what it was designed to do and what it became are very different. So at some point we started noticing, we, the industry, fitness industry started noticing a lot of injuries in CrossFit. And this is not my opinion. This is not me hating on them. This is factual. Um, at one point on their own website, there was a form on the left-hand column. And at any given time, there were 2,700 injuries of a thread threads going of people getting injured because you go to a, a, you know, a traditional, I'm just calling traditional. I'm not, you know, I've got friends of mine that own CrossFit gyms and this is not who I'm talking about. I'm talking of your small gym that opens up and the owner doesn't know much different than the members coming in. Right. And they start doing Olympic lifts and Olympic lift is taking a barbell and, doing clean and jerks and pressing the bar over your overhead. There's so much technique in this. Now I was very fortunate when I first got into the fitness industry and I was uh, 18 years old. Actually it was at, I started at 18, but um, when I turned 19, I was working at a gym and there was a father son there and they are still the world record hold world record holders Mm -hmm. for Olympic lifting. And they actually both were in the Olympics. Um, different Olympics, but they both were in. And the technique that these two, uh, Rich Schutz and Fred Schutz are the names. I double check on that. But the technique that went into watching Rich lift was, it's an art form. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. He literally warmed up with a broomstick. 
then went to a slightly or heavier bar, then went to a regular Olympic bar, then started adding plates on. These were just as warm-ups because it was an art. It's a sport. There yeah. is no, nothing about it says fitness. Um, it's pure sport. So now you go into CrossFit. If I, and now I'm, I've gone into some CrossFit gyms myself. I know how to Olympic lift, but I need some coaching. Yeah. And it's not what I do on a regular basis. They, give, they hand me a bar, and they'll even put plates on it. And they say, okay, do a power clean. And now, fortunately, I know what that is. Uh, do a clean and jerk, do a snatch, you know, whatever lifts that they're after. I know what they are. I know what they're supposed to look like. I look over to my right, and I'm seeing a guy that is 45 years old. He's a CPA. He wants to get in shape, and he's standing next to me doing CrossFit. Major liability. Yeah. Like, horrible. Now, there are really good CrossFit gyms out there. A friend of mine owns one in this town. And uh, as a matter of fact, he's, he's one that I went to, and I said, tell me how you do it. And he said, we start with a broomstick. Now, he not only does he own a license for CrossFit, but he's also a USA uh, strength, I think he's a USA strength coach, but he's USA certified uh, weightlifting coach. Okay. So he literally takes everybody through the whole process. Yeah. And, and it's literally a process. Now, the problem that he had uh, as a CrossFit owner is potential members would call up and say, what do you charge? Because I'm just comparing CrossFit to CrossFit. And he's like, wait mm. a minute, that's not even fair. Yeah. Yes, I'm a CrossFit gym, but here's the services I give you. You know, um, you, you can't compare the two. So when people would join his gym, they realize, okay, you're way more into technique and form than anything I've seen before. Yeah. These are the people that are not going to get injured. It's going to take them a lot longer to get to their goal of a certain amount of weight, but it's a beautiful path because they're not injured. So back to the original question is, you know, how long would it take somebody? It all depends. It depends who you hire and you better, you know, if your goal is to move a lot of weight, you better be looking for a certified strength coach um, some certifications out there you'll see behind their name is what's called a CS, CS, which is a certified strength conditioning specialist. Um, okay. they're certified through an organization called NSCA, probably one of the best ones out there. Um, there are USA weightlifting coaches. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So again, it, it's certain niche that that's who you're after. The yeah. clientele I get they come to me and they say, okay, what's my realistic goal of losing body fat? Mm -hmm. That's my specialty. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, we may have talked about another podcast, but it never fails that they'll, someone will come to me. I'll, typically, unfortunately, it's the mom of a child that is being bar or bat mitzvahed. Uh -huh. Now, I'm Jewish. I was bar mitzvahed. All bar or bat mitzvahs happen at the age of 13. Uh -huh. I get a phone call. And this woman says, my child is being bar mitzvahed in eight weeks. I said, great, congratulations. And I need to fit into a new dress. Terrific. What size dress did you buy? Well, I'm buying a much smaller dress than I wear now. How many I sizes? Say, <laughs> okay, understand that I'm Jewish and I'm sarcastic. Um, you've known about this day for 13 years. Why are you giving me eight weeks to get you ready for something you've known for the last 13 years was coming? That is not fair. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> and I get that a lot. Yeah, um, that's great. So, okay. So the reoccurring theme that I'm seeing here is that if you have some kind of um, fitness, and I heard you use this term sport a lot so yes. if you have some kind of fitness or sport goal um that you need to hire a professional or to find a mentor yeah absolutely um which i think is always a great idea because especially if you're not familiar with um the goal that you're trying to achieve having someone who has that expertise would be extremely helpful yeah um so find a a coach or a mentor that will be able to help you reach that goal? And what are two other things that you can think of off the top of your head um, that you would recommend to someone who has a spin fitness or sport goal? Uh, <laughs> I was trying to combine those two words. A fitness, fitness or sport, uh, sport goal. <laughs> uh, be realistic. Um, that's really, uh, 
you know, that's probably the number one thing that I try to work with my clients is be realistic. Mm -hmm. And this is not a, uh, this is not a short term fix by any means. Like I can, I can tell you what supplements work, um, to drop body fat fast, guaranteed, no problem about it. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you what their long term results were going to be. Uh, they haven't been around long enough. They haven't been tested long enough. So I can't tell you that, look, you're not going to have any side effects in 20 years. I have no idea. Yeah. So I come from it as a lifestyle change. Um, you want to change the way you look and feel and move, commit to that. Yeah. Uh, be realistic. It's not happening overnight. You didn't get here, not you, Michelle, but <laughs> you, the client, did not get here in one weekend. You yeah. didn't get here in one year. Mm-hmm. So that's where I try to tell people is be realistic Tell me where you came from. When's the best shape of your life you've been in? Mm -hmm. How long ago was that? What did you do between then and now? I'm not saying it's going to take us 20 years, but it it may take us longer than a year. But the thing is that you'll never see that weight again. Yeah. And my clients that have lost weight with me and that have done it the right way, and I have some that I've trained in the past that have not done it the right way because they didn't want to listen to what I said. Mm -hmm. Um, The ones that I say that do it the right way, they've never seen that weight ever again. Okay. So have a mentor, be realistic, Mm -hmm. and what's the last one? Don't be afraid to start. It's never too late to start. uh, One of my clients was the age of 80 and when we started exercising and trained him for five years. And at the age of 82, he was playing three rounds of golf, uh, playing a round of golf every day for three days in a row, no Advil. Uh, So it's... It's amazing what the body can do. Don't be afraid to start. It's never too late. That's great. So there you have it, guys. Don't be afraid to start. Be realistic and find a mentor to help you reach those goals. And a great mentor for you in the future would be all of the MPF podcasts. So we hope that you continue to stay tuned. Until next time. Thank you. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to the podcast. I am really enjoying the process And I hope you guys are enjoying the information that I am bringing to the table. It has been my love for 30 plus years of being in this industry. And this is the best way I know how to share it and help out to others. So if you could do me a favor now and share this information with your friends, family, coworkers, enemies, anybody on the street having coffee, doesn't matter. Anyone that you think should be listening to health and fitness information, this podcast is for them. Don't forget to rate us, give us those five stars, and don't forget to write a review. Tell us what you like about it. You can follow us on Facebook, on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Instagram. A lot more content on social media than just on this podcast. Thanks again. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.